One way that rates can be tested is in graphical form. And this is a fairly straightforward thing, but once you understand it, it actually becomes very useful. The requirement is that you need to have a rate law that is expressed in terms of only one reactant. So it would have something like rate equals some rate constant times only one reactant raised to some coefficient. And what you do is you plot various quantities versus time, and you see which one yields a straight line graph. The graph that yields the straight line will tell you what alpha is, what the order is of that rate law with respect to reactant A. And so these are the possibilities for the order, x-axis, y-axis, and slope. So if it's a zero order reaction, just for all of these, notice that the x-axis is going to be time. But if it's zero order, what will happen is the y-axis with just the molarity of A will yield a straight line and it will be slanting downward, so the slope will be negative K, where K is the forward reaction rate constant. And that kind of makes sense because if you were to plot the quantity of something versus time and you notice that it depleted the quantity the same amount as time went on, independent of how much of A there was, that would mean that the amount of A had no impact on the rate of the reaction. It was just consistently moving forward and using up that A. And so if you were to plot A versus time with that, you would end up getting a straight line moving downward. It's just as time goes on, it consistently uses up reactant A and it doesn't care at all about how much of A there is. It just continues to deplete it as time goes on. For a first order reaction, what you do is you plot the ln of A versus time. And if that yields a straight line with a downward slope, then that means that it's a first order reaction and the slope will be expressed as negative K. For a second order reaction, you'll be plotting one over A versus time. And what you'll notice is that there will actually be an upward slope with the slope of K. And that's what will be the straight line. And finally, if it's a third order reaction, you're plotting one over two times the molarity of A squared, and that will yield a straight line with an upward slope of K. And so if we have a set of tables like this, then we can look at these tables and figure out what order this reaction is with respect to the reactant A. Notice that this is a curved line when you plot A versus time. And so that means it's not zero order because the zero order quantities of the concentration of A versus time, that does not yield a straight line. LN of A is a similar story. It's a slightly curved line and that tells you that it's not first order because that doesn't yield a straight line either. What we see here is when we graph one over A versus time, now we have a straight line and it has an upward slope. And so because one over A versus time yields a straight line, that tells us that alpha or the order must be two. It must be second order with respect to A. And the slope being positive K, that is a way of expressing this information in linear form. This can be tested as a graph, and that's a definite possibility that you encounter a graph like this and you just see which one yields a straight line. It could also be tested in a simple written question where they say something is second order with respect to reactant A, which graph would yield a straight line? And then your job is just to remember, well, if it's second order, it's the one over A graph versus time that yields a straight line. Or they can take it one step further and they can express this line as an equation, as a y equals mx plus b linear equation. And so in that case, our value y is going to be 1 over a, and that's going to equal the slope, which is k. We've already established that the slope is going to be k, times the x-axis value, which is time, plus some sort of y-intercept, whatever the y-intercept is, and we'll just call that b here. And so you can see these things expressed in such a way. And this is 
the linear equation that works for a second order rate because y equals mx plus b, that's a, a straightforward algebra line equation. And our y-axis here is 1 over the concentration of A. Our x-axis is time, and our slope is k. So y equals slope times x plus b, whatever this intercept is. And so that's one way that you can see rates tested on the MCAT. If you have something like an ln of A, it can be a bit more complicated because then you might have to raise e to some power or something like that. But if you're looking at a rate equation and e is involved or an ln is involved, you will know that that is a first order reaction because that's the only one that involves the natural log. So if you see e raised to something as a way of expressing a rate law, then you know that you're dealing with a first order reaction. So Memorize this table and be able to recognize which of these graphs will yield a straight line for which order. And whichever one yields a straight line, that tells you the order. The slope of the line tells you k, the rate constant. And it will either be positive in these two cases or it will be negative if it's a zero or a first order reaction. And lastly, if it comes to a line equation like a y equals mx plus b, just be comfortable taking this as the y-axis, this as the x-axis, and the slope as k, and expressing it that way. And you should be good to go whenever rates are expressed in conjunction with graphs in your chemistry exams.